In this video, I'm not talking about how hot concrete can get in a fire before it's totally ruined. In the end, I'm going to give you an awesome tip on how you can evaluate a building that's been in a fire and see exactly how hot the concrete got. My name is Tyler Lay, and I love concrete, and I love making these videos to help you learn more about it. So how is concrete damaged by fire? Well, when the temperatures are kind of low, zero to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the aggregates just kind of expand and the paste kind of expand and it's not that big of a deal. But right as you get to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, you actually start to lose all of your water in the concrete. And as that water evaporates, the paste is gonna shrink and the aggregate is just gonna keep expanding. So you've got the paste shrinking in one direction, you got the aggregate expanding in another direction, and it caused micro cracks. It causes these small cracks inside the concrete. And as we know, cracks aren't good because air is not very strong. But if we keep increasing the temperature, as we go up above 300 degrees Fahrenheit, when you get to around 750 or so, or about 800, then all of a sudden the aggregates start to deteriorate. They start to basically fall apart. And your hydration products, the calcium hydroxide and the calcium silicate hydrate, they also start to decompose. But this deterioration is all about the type of aggregate you're using. Not all of them are the same. If you're concrete, happens to get to about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, it's pretty much ruined. It pretty much can't be salvaged. And I'll explain why with some data coming up. Now here's a very interesting set of tests. These were done on cylinders that were tested hot. These cylinders were never loaded. They were just heated up. And when they got to these temperatures, they loaded them until they failed. And I'm showing in the red line, a river gravel aggregate, in the green line, a limestone aggregate, and on the y-axis is the percentage of the original compressive strength, and on the x-axis is the temperature. And as you can see, as the temperature goes up and up and up, then you're losing capacity. But you notice there's a difference in performance between the river gravel and the limestone. And about 800 degrees Fahrenheit is right when that river gravel really starts to take a nosedive. And around 1200 degrees Fahrenheit is right when that limestone really starts to take a nosedive. Now that's the aggregates that make, make up the coarse aggregate inside the concrete. And you can see they decompose at different temperatures. So concrete with river gravel deteriorated faster at higher temperatures than concrete made with limestone aggregates. That's really important. It really depends on the aggregate you use inside your concrete. Now, this is the data I showed you before. This is the sample that was not loaded previously and they were tested while they were hot. Now, let's say I loaded a sample. I'm gonna load it up to 40% of its ultimate load, but again, I'm gonna test it while it's hot. I still got temperature down here on the x-axis and I've got this compressive strength drop, this percentage compressive strength loss. And again, we see right when you hit 800 degrees Fahrenheit, the river gravel drops heavily. And when you hit 1200, the limestone drops heavily. So this load, what does it do? Well, it probably decreases the micro cracking. It probably keeps those cracks smaller. And the loaded concrete loses strength again quickly at 800 degrees Fahrenheit for the river gravel or 1200 for the limestone. That's likely when the aggregates just start deteriorating. And it doesn't matter if it's preloaded or not, once you start to deteriorate your aggregates, it's kind of game over for that concrete system. But let's go back to that system that was no load and tested while it's hot. I'm gonna compare it to another system. This system was not loaded. It was heated up to these temperatures and then they left them. Same concrete mixtures, but they left them for seven days. This is the temperature that the concrete saw. This is the loss in strength. And look at the limestone and river gravel. This is the same stuff I showed you before. Look how high they used to be. But after sitting there for seven days, they lost significant strength. What? Let's show this in a different way. I'm plotting all on the same graph. This is all for limestone aggregate. Here's the material that was stressed, here, but tested while it's hot. Here's the material that was unstressed, but tested while it's hot. And here's the same material, but it was allowed to cool for seven days. Not cooled quickly, just air cool for seven days. We see a 30% decrease 
in the capacity. What the heck is going on? Well, while these things are hot, again, these micro cracks are kind of small, and if you cool them down, they can get larger. The concrete's gonna lose strength over time after the heat exposure. The high heat keeps those micro cracks small. It keeps them close together. And as the concrete cools are gonna get wider, and as those cracks open up, it's gonna decrease your strength. And this means that just because your, your concrete structure made it through the fire, it doesn't mean it's safe. It doesn't mean it's safe. Here's a crazy useful tip. The aggregates typically change color during the fire because of the iron inside of them, but the change in color is permanent. It's locked in. So you can come back after the, after the concrete's cooled down, you can hit it, you can knock it open, you can take a core, and you can look inside at the color changes in the aggregates, and that gives you a great idea at what temperature the concrete got to. For example, a river gravel, okay, a siliceous aggregate, right when it gets to around 550 degrees Fahrenheit, it starts to turn pink. When it gets to about 1,000, it gets to a bright red. After the material turns gray, it's game over. It's deteriorating heavily after that. So if I have a concrete slab and there's fire underneath it, I could actually take a chunk out. Look at that concrete and I did that on a real structure that was on fire. And this is what it looked like. And as you can see this pink region, this pink region is restricted to the outside half inch of the concrete. That means that region got to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, but the rest of it, it didn't. Since the only the outside of the concrete's pink, it means the bulk of the member did not get that hot. And so the member is safe. This is a crazy, crazy useful tool to evaluate how they perform in the field. You'll basically look at the aggregates from the outside of the concrete to the inside, and you should see this color change. Now you can do some testing after the fact if you need to in the aggregate to kind of back into what that color change is, but this is insanely useful to figure out at what temperature and at what depth it's made it inside your concrete structure. So in summary, if your temperatures are less than about 700 degrees Fahrenheit, you get some strength loss, but it's not that big of a deal. When you get to 700 to 1000, you start to get a lot more strength loss typically. And when you get above 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, your concrete's not salvageable. And then your strength loss is impacted by the loading and the aggregate type. And the concrete was gonna continue to lose strength after a fire. As it cools, those cracks are gonna get wider and wider and wider. And you can tell the temperature of the concrete by the color of the aggregate after the fire. A awesome, crazy, useful tool. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Hit the bell, because it's a useful way to keep track of my videos when I release new ones. And leave me a comment below. Take care, everybody. Bye.